Hi, I'm Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And today we're talking about tempo shoes or up paced running shoes. Or lightweight daily trainers. True. Yeah, it could be considered kind of, lightweight daily trainers. It's like the Venn diagram. Yeah. I mean, here's how we like to run. We like to have a daily trainer for our easy miles and for just slogs, those days where you're just getting in your, I hate to call them garbage miles, but your, your regular mile miles. Yeah. Yeah. And then I like to have a shoe that feels a little peppier when we're going for a speed workout or tempo or even a hill workout. You could even race in these, really. You can, but then don't you want that next don't shoe? Don't you want to spend two hundred fifty dollars on a race shoe? Yeah, exactly. You want to, you want to be like, <laughs> here's all my money to running shoes, and that's where we get to. This is my favorite category of running shoes, period. I mean, if if we could only have one running shoe yeah. in rotation, it would definitely be this style of running shoe, just because this does everything. It's, it's versatile, fun to run in. They're light. They have pep. These are the fun shoes. These are the ones that if you needed to and you didn't want to spend that extra money on, say your Alpha Flies, your uh, Meta Speed Skies, your, you know, all your $200 and above range <laughs> the shoes. Cloud sh the on cloud shoe or whatever that's going to cost close to $300 coming out. Yeah. Anyways. Cloud Boom Echo. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. this sucker's just uh, Whatever. Yeah, good um, luck, guys. I'm just um, kidding. On, you're cool. Yeah, you're very cool. Very cool. It's like Too you, cool, maybe. It's like they took up smoking. <laughs> So we'll get to it, the tempo shoes, and right now we're gonna tell you some of our favorite tempo shoes in this mix. Robbie, why don't we start off with the Asics Magic Speed. Yeah, and so this is the, I don't know, little brother to the Asics Meta, Meta Speed Sky, this one right here. Yeah, so Robbie, let's break down this shoe. It does have a half carbon plate in it, not a whole one, so you got from the midfoot kind of going forward. Kind of looks like a kidney bean. Yeah. Do you like kidney beans? Nobody likes kidney beans. Why, why do they even exist? <laughs> Probably cheap. It's the, they fill it into soups and chilies and things. Like, yeah, that's something you can eat. It's got protein. Cool. Anyway, so this plate, I don't really feel this plate so much in this shoe, but what you do feel is a nice lightweight, fast shoe. So Robbie, what's the weight on this guy? Okay, so this weighs 7.9 ounces, 224 grams for a men's size nine. Pretty lightweight in that normal range for like a tempo shoe. It does have a Meta Rocker technology, so when you get rolling, you really roll to your stride. And this, I didn't expect to like the shoe. I remember we like put this on our feet and we were like, eh, this is not. I think our expectation though, we get heard, oh, you're getting the V6 Racer. We and we're like, this race. is gonna be the competition. Yeah for the Vaporfly, but which it wasn't. It wasn't, but I think it makes for a great tempo shoe, lightweight daily trainer, or even a race shoe if you really just don't want to spend that 250. Yeah, and when weight. we talked to ASICs, they said this shoe might be in the space for the person that wants a race day shoe but isn't a sub three hour marathoner. Yeah. I need all the help I can get, so I'm still going for, you know, the <laughs> give me your biggest weapon. But overall, like overall great shoe. Okay, next up. Catchers. Razor, razor excess which so, the name is an excessive <laughs> because they're all razors it's now. kind of like an oxymoron because you got the razor it's supposed to be thin and you got the excess yeah jumbo shrimp oh yeah and all those words yeah I, I i can't think that quick on my feet dude jumbo shrimp though yeah, yeah. Love it. i guess a jumbotron is a jumbotron okay. anyway let's get to the shoe you've got no plate in this no this and is you just... don't really need it Nope, and this also is another rocker shoe. They're calling out Hyper Arc in this shoe. It used to be called M Strike, and what they were doing was encouraging you to land on your midfoot and roll through because they feel like that's a more efficient way to run, and it's better for you, not landing all crashing your weight on your heel. We don't care how you land. Land any way you want. But what you got on here is some Goodyear rubber on the bottom. I think that's the excess. It's got more rubber than a normal razor. Well, the stack height is higher too as well. So it's actually a 30 millimeter stack height in the heel, 26 in the forefoot, four millimeter drop. I like the lower drop. Sometimes it's a little, gets a little crazy. It gets, it gets spicy. Yeah. Yeah. And what I like about this is they're playing around with foam. So some of these super critical foams are TPU based, some are EVA based, particularly in this one's EVA based. So it's a little firmer, but it gives a little more pop I feel. And I do like that this has more stack height because the razor, it's the original razor is 
cool shoe, great shoe, but also a good tempo shoe. Mm -hmm. But this gives you a little more cushion. I start to bottom out on the regular razor right underneath the toes yeah, here. And this sure. one, I didn't. I do feel like this one floats in that area of why not be a daily trainer. It does have a mono mesh upper, which we're gonna see in a lot of these tempo shoes. They're going to try to keep these shoes as light, light as possible, and that's when you're gonna see the mono mesh appear. Do you know what the price of this one is? Oh yeah. It's 130, $130, right, Robin? Yeah, so exactly. So it's a, on the lower range. How much was the Magic Speed? I the think Magic Speed was 150. 150, yeah. So probably my favorite shoe of the year. So far. It might be my favorite shoe of the year. I know it's my favorite tempo shoe. It, Nothing has come close to this as far as the tempo shoe. It just feels right. So this is the New Balance Rebel V2. Uh, V1 came out two years ago, and it was like a cool shoe. Like, it was a cool shoe, shoe, and then I remember I asked like, if I could get the upper, get the Vazi upper on it, and they made me the uh, Vazi upper. Still one of my favorite moments of all time. <laughs> but this shoe, has a fantastic upper. I don't know that I would change much about this shoe. Ben Johnson, one of our other reviewers, had put 400 miles in this shoe before the, the review even came out, and he just loved everything about it. You, All of our reviewers loved yeah. everything about it. It's this shoe. super light, it's super breathable. Yeah, so this weighs 7.3 ounces, 210 grams for a men's size nine. Which is really nice and light. Mm -hmm. The amount, the feedback you get from this fuel cell Midsole is really nice. Now this one, I think is a TPU infused, infused injected or yeah, something. Yeah. Um, midsole, so it's got that super critical foam, which gives it a really nice bounce. If I had any complaints about it at all, maybe a little more foam underneath this part of your foot, because I do feel it kind of, you can definitely feel it, but then I flip back and forth, because then I'm like, when you're running, it really gives you a lot of feedback from your foot. You're feeling the ground, you're going, and this shoe can turn over. Yeah, and it does have this like overhauled upper on it. It's somewhat see-through over here. This is one that you could do all your daily training. I think that it might feel a little minimal underfoot for like all yeah. your daily training. It's but not a huge drop. It's 24 in the heel, 18 in the forefoot, six millimeter drop. And I think you could run any distance in this shoe. It's just gonna depend on how much cushioning you like. Now with some of the foams that you can get a lot of cushioning, this not, might not seem like enough to you. I would definitely pair this with the RC Elite 2, and then you'd have a you great have tempo. There. Yeah, you have tons <laughs> of cushion. Enough for tempo runs, and you know, just fast day runs, training. You get that RC Elite 2 on there, and, and you got the plate, and it just- You're dazzling too, the yeah. sparkles on that shoe. Okay. And I, I mean, this shoe looks incredible. I yeah. feel like New Balance design has been on point. Probably, probably if we were gonna have the stock market of shoes, New Balance would be up there. Oh, for sure. For 2000. What 20, year is it now? I think it's 2021. 20, we came back from the future, and we're back here in the past. All right, so this one was a little controversial. It's not for everybody. I think people were expecting some big things out of this, considering a lot of the technology mimics the Alpha Fly, or at least looks like it does. And then when people got running in it, I don't know that it, they were expecting it. I, I consider this, this one, different. yeah, this is like a, a, a something you have to get used to. It's not an immediate pullout understand and run in. You've got your Zoom X up front with your Zoom Air airbags down here. You got React foam in the back, so it's more durable than say the Alpha Fly or Vaporfly by just adding this heel of React. You've got plenty of rubber on the bottom. This shoe is built to kind of last. It's got a very sturdy upper. Initially when I ran it, it's not a fun shoe to run your Easy. regular paces in. Right. You have to want to pick up the pace that's when the shoe really starts to sing. So if you like to go through your stride at a little faster pace, run a lot, the shoe really starts to sing. And I, I love this shoe. By the way, the stack height on this is wild. This has 45 in the heel, 35 in the forefoot. See, if you are one of those guys like me who wants to get an extra nope. inch, put that on the old baseball card stat line. Yeah, we could definitely one. get up there with these. The feeling of this, also doesn't feel like a normal running shoe. You come through and you definitely feel the front. You feel the airbags, you feel kind of a clomping. It's a loud shoe. And the only other thing that's kind of a negative to the shoe, the retail when it first came out was 200 bucks, which it's not your race day shoe, this is a tempo shoe. I will say it's gonna last longer than some of the race day shoes. That is a lot of money of 200 bucks for a very specific type of shoe. But we have seen it go on sale lately and you can definitely pick it up on sale Real quick, how does this compare to some of your other favorite discontinued Nike shoes in, from the past? Turbo 2, Zoom Fly. I don't feel like this is gonna have a long life uh, in the current 
way that it's designed. So we'll see if there's going to be a Tempo 2 or whatever. Right. I think it'd be horrible if there wasn't. It's so different. This I can't even really compare okay. it. These airbags, they don't pop unless you <laughs> pop. Step on a nail. Yeah, or step <laughs> on a nail. So it's a really good shoe. It does take a little while, break-in period to get into, but once you find your sweet spot in the shoe, it's quite smooth. Right. Puma's back. Yeah, which I wasn't even sure they were. Wait, were they still making running shoes? I think they just kind of threw some stuff out there, but okay. it wasn't really trying. All right. Anyways, so like this said, year they come out with a full lineup of like legit shoes. Great shoes. We had the Nitro, Nitro Elite. We had the, the Deviate Nitro, the Velocity, the Velocity Nitro. Yeah, all of them. And this one is the lightweight trainer, the Liberate. You've got the super critical foam. You've got Puma Grip Rubber. By the way, best outsole in the game right now. No it joke. is, it's really surprising. They, they have a fantastic grip on this shoe. Yeah. It's the lightest, of all the shoes that we're reviewing in this review, it is the lightest. How much does it weigh? It comes in at 6.3 ounces, 179 grams. You can't feel that. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's as light as the Vaporfly, I believe. The thing that's great about this shoe is it really has a nice feel for it. My first out of the box experience, I ran 13 miles in it. My feet felt great, everything felt fine, and it doesn't have a ton of cushioning. And actually, we don't have the stack plates. I've tried finding them, they're like nowhere to be found. Um, it's this but much it's gotta this be much. like in that 24 range. Yeah. Like it's pretty low profile and a low drop, lower drop as well. Really quick through your stride on this shoe. Uh, the only thing I didn't love about the shoe, it does seem to run a little long as do all the Puma shoes. Yeah, so. they're a little bit narrow and long coming up. They could just taper down a little bit and it would work out fine. But I love the lacing system combined with the mono mesh upper. It's, you, it feels like you get strapped in like a, it just feels yeah. like a fashion. And you had a nice gusseted tongue. So, you know, we love that. Yeah. When we talk about like daily trainer yeah. and that, I don't know if this one would be enough for me for daily Yeah, training. not so much daily training, maybe a few miles here and there. I mean, you said you did take it on 13, but I wouldn't like do that every long run. Yeah, um, I would save this one for the days where you want to feel a little bit quicker. Yeah, and by the way, this is also, I feel like one of the best deals at $110. It's, I mean, we put it in our budget shoe, Post that we put up yeah. recently because I was like, for 110 bucks, you're getting a lot out of this. Yeah. And I'm hoping, I know that they're already looking at the future models of the shoe and what they're going to do it. I hope they don't get too far away from just, it's a simple great shoe. I think that a lot of shoe companies go out there and they try to like add all these bells and whistles to make it more exciting mm -hmm. when this shoe does it already. So this Robbie is the Endorphin Speed 2. Last year, this shoe, you're holding it. Yeah, this is probably your favorite shoe. shoe. Oh yeah, and period. We, it, it still is, and we put this as the best overall shoe of 2020. Mm -hmm. It's still my favorite shoe right now. What did they change? Uh, pretty much nothing. Mm, uh, that might be a it. tiny bit to the upper and the lacing system here, but honestly, that's about it. For speed day tempo workouts, while this one fits in that category, this is probably the most versatile of all of them. Yeah. I like, think you could do this one daily trainer, speed day, race day. And then, so as, as far as being the most versatile, I feel like this one can carry you through all your running needs. I think it's just the perfect amount of like cushion, speed, responsiveness, all the catchy buzzwords, I don't even know what they mean. It is a plated shoe. It is. So, But it's a nylon plated it shoe. It is. So it's like pantyhose in there, nylon. Right? Nylon is another word for plastic. Uh, learning things. So. Yeah, it's a plastic plate in that power run. People TV. need to embrace the plastic again. Just come back to it. I know it's Nobody not Nobody cool. wants to say it. And it's not sustainable. It's not, it, everything's <laughs> oil based, you know, whatever. Just say it's plastic. This has a nylon plate, which gives it a more forgiving landing and kind of push off than say the Endorphin Pro, which is a firmer. Firmer ride. Uh, yeah, firm, firmer all right. I say firmer, snappier. Firmer and snappier with carbon fiber. So, and I think we've seen most people kind of gravitate towards this shoe over the Pro just because it's so versatile. It is. You, it's one of those shoes that when you go out for a run and you're doing like your longer run, all of a sudden you notice, hey, my pace is picking up. That's... And you start rolling into faster speeds naturally is. and it doesn't feel as much effort. But I love the lockdown. I love the look of it. I mean, that's wild, but whatever. And you got checkerboards this year. So that's the big change this year is checkerboard. I think they just went people were talking about the checkerboard. Yeah. I mean, they, they, no they, change. They, it worked. Yeah. Anyway, so definitely pick this up. This is how much by, is it? By the way, uh, one hundred sixty dollars. So it's eh, 
a little bit higher, but it's a plated, you know, you get that nylon plate. For as much versatility you can get out of it, and I don't really feel like the cushioning degraded over time as fast as no, some not traditional EDAs. And by the way, it's a 35 and a half millimeter stack in the heel and 27 and a half in the toe, so that's eight millimeter drop. So it's, it's kind of a nice spot. Awesome. Yeah. So if you want the second version, is it released in the United States in July? It does, so coming out, uh, July 15th, I believe. If you can't wait, it's the same shoe. Yeah, if you find this on sale, I'm gonna tell you right now, just pick up last year's version. Yeah. Don't sweat it. Roberto. Mm, there we go. I thought you were gonna go Bobby. Mm. You don't seem like a policeman. Ricky Bobby? Okay, Ricky Bobby's good. That's what I thought. All right. You know how much you love the speed? Yeah. The sake that we just I were do. talking about? I love that shoe a lot. This is the one that I think is mm. my speed. When you first told me that, I was kind of surprised because I don't think you loved the original Carbon X. Neither, did not. Neither did I. Uh, I yeah, mean, we was... have it on the rack here. You can grab it right there, the blue. Yeah. This okay, is, this, this is my version. You can see how clean it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was the original Carbon X. This is a Carbon X 2. Besides not having a goat hoof, which I love, there's some other things that make this shoe better that I couldn't figure out. And you can kind of see it here. See this blue line, white line mix? In between there is where the plate was. Now take a look at here, it's gonna be a little harder to see, but you have a gray line and a white line. They move the plate further away from the foot. You know what that does, Robbie? Um, let me guess, it makes it a little more cushion or yeah. not a sperm? Underneath your foot, you get a little more give before you get that hard, rigid plate. And it makes a huge difference. When I first got this shoe, I was like, I really didn't like the first one. What did you guys do? And we talked to Hoka and they're like, the plate got moved down and I was like, that's amazing. I'm actually annoyed because I haven't run in this shoe because I didn't even want it because <laughs> of the first one. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, just Thomas, Thomas can take it. Or yeah. Thomas it, can be the only one who runs in it, yeah. You come down through that plate, that plate gives you a little bit of pop off the toe. Why I like it is the same reason you like the speed. If you're not going all out speed that day and you just want to cruise miles, it's very comfortable to cruise. And when you do want to pick it up, that plate can help you pick it up. And at the weight of? Uh, nine ounces, 257 grams. It, uh, for this, That's for men's size 10 and a half. So yeah. it's, a little, it's still a little bit heavier than all the other shoes we've been talking about. But that's why I think it floats into that, why I'm saying daily trainer. Daily trainer. Yeah. Like this one I wouldn't necessarily want to use for race day, but for daily training and tempo, it really can do a lot. And you know what? I wouldn't put it behind me for, uh, for marathon distance or yeah, even for further. Sure. If I was going 50K, the shoe's definitely on oh, foot. Well, I mean, Jim Walmsley, he did the, all those I record. I think 100K. He did the 100K in this, and he didn't get the record, but came pretty damn close. I thought he got the record in the 100K. It wasn't. Uh, he got the record in the 50 mile, I believe. Mm. I, I can't remember. Anyway, Jim, write us a letter, tell Jim, us. Just tell us what you did, what yeah. records you broke, Jim. So, and if you like Hoka, there's some nice features about, I feel like the upper works really well. You've got this, tab on the back that acts as a pull tab and just a heel yep. counter. As far as longevity might be an issue, I know our other reviewer Matt put in like 200 to 225 in the original Carbon X and felt like it bottomed out a little bit. And this seems to be a common thing with some- With some of the EVAs that the Hoka uses. But I, I don't know, I think with this one, the carbon plate being further apart and getting that more cushion on her foot, I, I think it's it. actually gonna hold up just fine. Yeah. I don't know how many miles I have in these yet, but I mean, for the review, I had quite a few and then I've been wearing it just because I like it. Yeah, you wear it so. sometimes at the office and like, yeah. hey, look at that, the cardinal, yeah. the cardinal colorway on his feet. Well, actually. Scarlet fever. Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> doing doing workouts in the office or not showering before I get to the office. Do we, any of well, yeah. shower? Yeah, it's a disgusting I don't know right now. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's smell of vision yeah. Stack in the heel is 32, 27 in the toe, uh, five millimeter drop. And and the price is $180, which by the way, I think is the same that the Rocket X costs. I yeah. like this better than the Rocket X. There you heard goes. that here. All right, so that's the Carbon X2 on the list. All right, so that is our pick for up-tempo shoes this year. I think they're really good. I don't even know, is the Nike Tempo, was that last year? Uh, it was kind of like end of last year. Yeah, so it got I, weird. We're kind of like merging the things We'll merge that a little one bit. In. We'll give that one a pass. Yeah. but. That's it, and if you have any questions about how we use shoes in our rotation to make our runs more enjoyable and to have more fun running, just hit us up in the questions. Um, also, 
we're in the middle of the drop season, not the drop. Well, we are in the drop. That's our podcast. So check that out. Tune in for that. But I really meant to say grit. Yeah. Summer grits coming up. Uh, run a bunch of miles, get some cool swag. Brandon, throw that up on the screen. And a registration link is in the description. So hit that up. It's going to be an awesome time. We had a great time last summer. It's going to be good again. So yeah. check that out. Make sure you subscribe. We're, we're at 75% full for, oh. for grit. So if you want to get in, you get in now. Okay, you can win prizes. You get cool swag. It's awesome. Check us out on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Tell your friends about it. Tune in for the drop. Follow us on Strava. Strava. By the way, join the Strava group. By the way, July 10th, they're having an office HQ launch party. So if you're around or if you're not around, come to Baltimore. It's free. It's going to be awesome. We're yep. away. We're Asics hoping. is going to hook you up with it's some gonna stuff. It's going to be nuts. It's going to so, be awesome. Cool. So do it. Peace. Bye. Say hi to your mom. Yeah, say hi to your mom, Robbie. Hi, mom. Liberate Liberate. Liberate. The, the Liberace Nitro. Ready to go? What's the deal with Liberace? Why is he why is that guy like famous? Well, he was a famous piano player and musician. Yeah. What's his name? Who's the guy? Uh, Elton John? Yeah. Elton John is a light version of oh, wow. Liberace. Liberace was, but what was his what was his talent? He was just a piano player. He's an entertainer. Like yeah. But piano. like he didn't have famous songs, right? Uh, I don't know. I, like, he had Vegas residencies and stuff. That's like, I don't understand a Vegas residency. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to go. A whole different world. <laughs>